Hey gang, Robert Carl 92 here. So it's Tuesday, August 27th, and tonight we're going to put in a pyrometer. Alright, so anyway, I've got this Autometer Phantom 2 pyrometer that I picked up for the Dodge from Summit Racing. And uh, I think tonight uh, I'd like to install it. Um, I'm kind of kicking myself a little bit when I had the uh, engine out on the stand and everything and the turbo was off. It would have been really uh, wise to cut the hole, or excuse me, drill the hole in the manifold um, for the pyrometer uh, probe. But uh, I don't know why I didn't do it. So. Uh, Anyway, uh, after driving it a little bit and hearing what the exhaust sounds like uh, after I shut the truck off, it sounds like it might be getting hot, it might be not. Um, a lot of people seem to think that pyrometers are a really good idea on uh, diesels. Um, that way you know if you're using too much fuel or too little fuel or, or whatever, so it's a really a good tuning tool. So uh, I decided to buy one and uh, undo some work. and. Uh, get it installed so uh, let me get you set up and I'll show you what we're gonna do I don't know if you can see that but check out the size of that freaking bee things giant well let me take care of him and anyway, I'm not really sure where, we, where he went off to but uh, I sprayed him with the spectracide and uh, he uh, kinda went from light to light I think he finally fell down Anyhow, so we've got our gauge with a nice electrical connection at the back. Removal of decal may lead to damage of internal electronics. Okay, so I guess we can't take that decal off. Whatever. Uh, we got a little hardware package, probe. I'm not really sure what the stickers are for. So the instructions will tell me. So anyway, this uh, this probe basically gets uh, installed in the exhaust manifold. Um, I read the instructions online, and they rec they recommend to actually put this before the turbo. Um, they say if you put it in the exhaust pipe, the reading can be up to 200 degrees off. I was thinking that right after the turbo, in the cast iron part of the turbo housing, would you know the exhaust adapter would be all right, but. And actually, that would make life, life a lot easier for me because I wouldn't have to take the, um, you know, the exhaust manifold off or anything. I would just have to uh, just drill it, and that's it. Let the filings fall down into the exhaust pipe. But uh, if you do it before the turbo, you got to take the turbo off so the filings don't fall into the engine, and so they don't fall into the turbo. So, anyhow, um, that gets mounted into the manifold with this little bung. And uh, there's a set screw, I guess right here, that holds it in place. So, let me go take the, uh, let me go unbolt the turbo. We'll set you up. We'll unbolt the turbo, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, dr we'll drill and tap the manifold. I, uh, I got a drill and tap from the Snap-on guy the other day. Since my tap had gone missing, and I figured if I'm going to buy a tap, I might as well buy a nice brand new drill bit too. So, anyhow, enough for ammo, let me get you set up. Alright, well it's a lovely bug-filled evening here in North Jersey. Oh, my bee friend looks like he's back. He must have woke up. Anyhow, what I'm going to do is, uh, i got to, like I said, get this turbo off. And I don't know if you can see it from the, where the camera is. But right here I have to uh, put an um, eighth-inch NPT um, hole in the, uh, in the manifold here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'll uh, get this turbo unbolted and maybe I'll see if I can move the camera over to the other side and uh, we'll get going on that. Okay, so I've got the, uh, the turbo separated and uh, I've got the ports taped off and I've stuffed some towels inside the, uh, the port as suggested in the bank's instructions. Got my center punch mark here. So uh, we're gonna go for it. This 
is cast iron, I imagine it will drill quite easy. gonna get the vacuum to suck the chips off. Okay, so now we're gonna open the hole up to uh, 11, 11 30 seconds. So I got our tap here, moved it up, and we're going to cut our threads. Amazing how easy cast iron threads. And looking in the hole, looks like we only have a couple of threads so far. NPT is uh, National Pipe Tapered, I believe. So anyhow, I'm still waiting to get a governor for this transmission. Um, I called a place in Florida a couple weeks ago. I explained to the guy what I was doing. And he said, oh yeah, no problem. I'm getting more of those in next week. I'll send you one. So, uh... Called them up on Friday to see what was what. And I had to remind him that I was the guy with the 47RH, like Harry, or hydraulic transmission. And he said, Did you say RH? I said, Yes. And he said, No, the governor that I have is for RE. I said, Well, no mechanical governor on electronic transmission and he said I know that he said we have solenoids governors and then he was kind of having a hard time understanding what I was looking for which kind of scared me since it's a trans shop so it turned out that he realized what I was talking about and said oh well they don't sell those at the dealer anymore so you're gonna have to uh, or get one from a junkyard or from a tran uh, a transmission builder, which I thought that that's what they were. So anyhow, back to the drawing board. So uh, I called uh, a friend up, level 10 transmission, 
and he's going to look. He said he's been striking out all day. Um, Danny's got a trans, the trans that was actually behind this engine. Uh, I think what we might do is take the governor out of that, get the weights out of it, take him to a machine shop and get them copied, and then I'll have more to, uh, I'll, I'll have a few made, and then maybe I'll start selling them since they seem to be made of unobtainium right now. Yeah, rats. Anyhow, let me finish threading this and I'll get you back on. All right, so we finished our tapping, put, cleaned the hole out, pulled the turbo back on. I put a little bit of anti-seize on there because I think that's the right thing to do. Probably a good idea to situate a little Allen set screw in a position that's easy to get to. I'm thinking it might not be a bad idea. Put some anti seeds on that too. Let's see if I can drop it. Let me get some anti seeds. I'll be right back. All right, so got that in place. So I probe. So they said you put it about halfway in the exhaust stream. Where that actually is, I'm not really sure. It feels like it's bottomed out, so. Let me throw the rest of the piping on and then uh, we'll run this wire through the firewall. All right, well, there's our pyrometer installed. Um, ironically, the gauge pod that I used to have my transmission uh, gauge on that I took out, I wound up putting back on there because uh, we already have these two gauges up here. And to exchange this for a triple is going to lay me back another 80 bucks. If I have this laying around, it's 80 bucks saved. So I may move the trans gauge to here and put this up on the pillar. I'm not sure. But uh, basically, uh, all I had to do was run the wires through the firewall. And uh, I just piggyback the, uh, the electric and the lighting uh, off of these gauges. So I just ran a wire, I guess, across the dash, up through here, and into the post. So, uh, Anyhow, that's that. Looks like the gauge works, so I'm going to take it for a ride and um, see what my exhaust gas temperature goes up to. And uh, we'll put this video together and uh, probably get it uploaded tomorrow. So, anyhow, as always, uh, thanks for watching and uh, take care. We'll catch you soon. See ya. Anyhow, one other thing. <laughs> Damn bugs.